Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how you use temporary tables within SQL through a few different examples. Now, temporary tables can really speed up some of your queries. If you run a query multiple times, you can throw that within a temporary table and call that a little bit later. But there is one caveat. Once you end up leaving your session where your temporary table is at, the table is now gone. So I'm gonna jump on my computer right now and let's start writing some code. Okay, so let's start building out our first temporary table. Now, the queries that I'm gonna run for this first part are based off this table called Nolan Ryan Career Stats. I grabbed this data from Baseball Reference, but you guys can see how it is year, age, and it goes all the way through some of the different statistics that baseball nerds like myself actually look at. So, with that being said, our first example that we're gonna be going through is to create a temporary table that has the Nolan Ryan year, which is this column right over here, the age, wins, strikeouts, ERA, and also whip. Uh, so we're gonna condense all of this uh, to a lot smaller of a table through this temporary table. So uh, let's first declare our temporary table. So what you're gonna wanna do is do a create table like this, and then we're gonna have it as a name. So we're gonna say like, and Nolan Ryan, and we'll put like small stats, just a random name that I thought of. And then just like a table declaration, we're gonna have to declare all these specific uh, table columns. So year is gonna be an int, so we'll put year int, age is also gonna be an int, wins is gonna be an int, int strikeouts int now era can also have decimal in it so we're gonna name this as a float so era as floats and lastly we need to have whip it's gonna be very similar to era so we're gonna say float like that and then when i run this over here let's create table you can see there's already an object name because I just ran this. So perfect, this is already populated. Now, if I wanted to select from here, you can say select star, oops, from, and grab Nolan Ryan stats. You can see that there is nothing within this table because we still have to insert it into it. So our first task is to insert these career values into the table. So all you have to do is click insert into and then just grab Nolan Ryan small stats and then we're going to write our query so we're going to go back over here we have the select start I'm just going to grab that copy and paste it down below and then uh, we need to grab this stuff so let's copy that over here and make sure all these columns line up so grab that table you can see we have year, so that's what year. Easy enough. Then we have age, great. Then we have wins, which is just a W. Strikeouts, which in here is SO, I believe. So SO, SO. Then we need ERA, which is just all ERA. And then whip, which should be just whip like this. I think that's everything, right? Year, age, wins, strikeouts, ERA, and whip. Awesome. So I don't need that now. And then let's run this query. And it says 27 rows affected. Awesome. So now let's go back in here and do this select star. And now you can see this is populated. We have year, age, wins, strikeouts, ERA, and whip. So this goes into this next part. So insert 1967 values into the Nolan Ryan table. Now, Nolan Ryan did not play in the major leagues in 1967. You can see that there's a gap here. When we go back over here, you can see that there is a gap here as well. Now, we're going to say he did play in 67, and we wanted to add in specific values. So we're going to have to add in values for year, age, wins, strikeouts, ERA, and whip. So again, if you want to see how that table looks, we're just going to grab this right here. And uh, let's add in our values. So what we're gonna do is very similar above. So insert into and Nolan Ryan stats. And now what we're gonna put here is values. And then what we're gonna do, open this up like that, and just throw our values in here. So 
let's say we're gonna have 19 at 67, which is needed, right? Age is gonna be 20, so put 20 over here. Now, wins doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna say six for this video. Then strikeouts, again, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna say he had 101 ERA. Let's say he had a 3.5 or 3.456 and whip. We're gonna say he had a 1.321. And just like that. And then all you have to do is run this query over here. And it says one row affected. Go back over here to the select star from Nolan Ryan stats. You can see there's no 67 there. But if you go all the way to the bottom, we have that 19 is 67 has been added in row 28. So if you wanted to get it over here, uh, you could just do an order by year. We go like that and do order by year and grab this. Now you can see 1967 is in spot number two. Okay, so it's your turn to do some of these questions. So we're gonna do an example like Nolan Ryan with Sandy Koufax, another legendary pitcher. Uh, he played for the Dodgers. So practice questions. So this is what our Sandy Koufax table looks like. So let's just grab this over here so you guys can see. And uh, this only has 12 because he had a very short career. And you can see all of this is populated, but we would like to have a shorter version of this table. So my idea is we create a temporary table where it shows Sandy Koufax year, age, and when strikeouts, ERA whip, just like above. But this time we're gonna add in the filter criteria where he had over 200 strikeouts. So we're gonna be looking at this column over here and only show the seasons where he had over 200, which is considered a pretty good year for a pitcher. So let's build that out. You want to pause the video and attempt this to yourself feel free to do so otherwise i'm going to start working on it so pause the video if not let's keep going so like the other nolan ryan example let's first create our table so we're going to do a create table and then i'm going to say this is called short sandy Koufax stats and i'm just like capitalizing stuff just so it stands out a little bit better that and then we're gonna have to declare everything and I'm just gonna copy everything that was over here that way I can save some time so let's just throw all of this in over here and let's run it so if we click execute commands completed successfully and this table is now uh, within our database I should say temporary table is now within our database okay awesome now we're gonna have to insert into this table so insert into, and I'll copy this table name over here, Sandy Koufax stats. And then what we have to do is do our select statement. So select, I'm gonna be lazy again and copy all this over here from Nolan Ryan stats. So select that from, we'll grab Sandy Koufax. And now let's add in our where criteria. So that way that we only show the seasons with over 200 strikeouts. So we're gonna do where, SO is greater than 200. And then if we just grab all of this over here, these four lines, six rows affected. Now, if we just do a select star from, and grab over here, Sandy Koufax stats. You can see age, year, wins, strikeouts, ERA, and whip is all present over here. Last six seasons of his career before he ended up retiring from the MLB. One of his best seasons was 1966. You can see 1.73 ERA, 0.985 whip, which in baseball, lower ERA and whip is better. More strikeouts is better with 317, and he retired at the age of 30. So pretty cool. If you're able to solve that, awesome. Let's move on to a little bit more advanced side of things with temporary tables. Now we're going to take a look at how to drop a temporary table. So you can just put over here, drop table if it exists. So drop table if it exists. And then let's say for Sandy Koufax, for example, we'll just throw this over here. And if we run this specific line, command completed successfully. So if we grab our Sandy Koufax stats and valid object name, because this no longer exists within our database. So pretty powerful to use. Uh, 
an application that you can put this in is stored procs, especially if it's going to continue to run uh, because you can't create the temporary table multiple times within one session. Okay. Lastly, I wanted to show you guys how you can utilize uh, temporary tables with common table expressions because the formatting is a little bit different than what you would expect. So let's write out just a basic uh, with statement. So with, and I'm gonna just call this as Kofax 200 strikeouts. Strikeouts, right? As, and let's put this over here. And what we're gonna just gonna do is select all of this, just like that. So I'm gonna tab this over. And then we can just put over here, select star from CMD Kofax 2000 strikeouts. And I'll explain how this works in a second. So once running this, you can see 61 through 66 and all this different stuff. Uh, with statement over here, you just put your query on here and you grab this and then this down over here, since you're selecting a star from this with statement, you can actually subquery it. So if I really wanted to, I could say also where, let's say wins is over 20. And I know you, you could just throw this over here and you'd get the same exact stuff, but I'm just going to show you, like you could run this query twice on this side of things. And you can see now it subqueries down to 63, 65, and 66. Now, in normal side of things, if you go back over here, we usually have insert into Sandy Koufax stats and we have our select statement underneath. Uh, but this has a little bit of complexity now because we have our with statement up here and then we have our select. So do you put it above over here or do you put it right over here in front of this select? Well, it's a little bit weird and you actually put it down below over here, not above the width statement. So, and before we actually add in that statement, let's actually create this table again because we did end up dropping it. So I'm gonna create this over here. And then now what I'm gonna do is grab this insert. We're gonna throw that over here. Now we're gonna run this. So it says three rows affected. And then if we go over here and select star from Sandy Koufax stats, you can see it shows the three. So when you are using a with CTE, make sure that you put your insert into for your temporary table above the select at the bottom, not above the with statement at the very top. So lastly, I wanted to show you guys where these temp tables were actually located at within your database. So if you go over here to your object explorer, you click databases, then you go over here to system databases, temp DB, then you go over here to temporary tables, then you see both of them. So you have Nolan Ryan small stats and then short Sandy Koufax stats. Hope you found this video helpful. If it was, make sure to subscribe as it does help out the YouTube algorithm and grow this channel. By the way, I know we did an example with a with statement. Well, I have a full video on CTEs right here and I really recommend you watch this video now.